Hey folks, time for a little disaster cycle Q&A, Earth's magnetic pole shift, the state of this planet right now, leading to the solar micronova and the world turning over. So, question number one, a little bit shorter scale. When is the next 5.9 month cycle uptick on the sun? Well, we've got a video on that, but the next 5.9 month cycle uptick should be in February or March. Remember, we have gone over this several times. We used all the papers and all of the research on it to predict the one in mid-August. No reason we can't predict the next one. Doesn't mean we're not gonna get any solar flares. We've had a couple of little tiny M-class solar flares. Nothing really significant. Definitely no significant geomagnetic storms. But the next time we should see that significant uptick is February or March. Don't forget, there is that 2.9 to three month half cycle. There are half cycles and double cycles of pretty much all of these things involving the sun. That should be towards the end of this year, but again, it won't be as significant as the one at the end of the year. Here's one that's pretty good for relating to the overall disaster. Ben, what's going to happen to all the nuclear plants during the magnetic excursion? What if we get a Carrington event? What's gonna happen during the solar micronova? First, this is something I've also gone over before, but this one is definitely worth repeating every once in a while. No, you should not live right next to a nuclear plant. Is the threat way overblown? Absolutely. Don't forget, you still get people online talking about Fukushima. They test fish out of the Pacific every single day. There has never been a fish that has been taken out of the Pacific that had the amount of radiation as in one banana. Eat fish from the Pacific the rest of your life not as much radiation as in one cigarette. The amount of cosmic rays and other kinds of energy in the atmosphere are going to do a heck of a thing on the radiation particles from even every nuclear blast in the world, every nuclear plant in the world going off. And when it comes to nuclear weapons, no, something like that's going to disable a nuclear weapon, not set it off. And don't forget, Please go watch The Nuclear Scare Scam by Galen Windsor. The guy was literally eating uranium. There's a reason why they told us to be so afraid of it. And yes, some of the fallout is bad. We can see that from Chernobyl. But do you know what Fukushima looks like now? Verdant. Animals everywhere. People can go in there, no problem. The amount of water that's going to be in the atmosphere after the severe evaporation of a micronova the UV light that's going to be come in, coming in and dissociating those particles, affecting them. It's just simply not as big of a deal as a lot of folks are making it online. Again, don't live right next to it because the local fallout before it gets involved with too much of the radiation, too much of the moisture, too much of the UV, that could be dangerous, absolutely. But in terms of the nuclear plants being able to end the whole world after the solar micronova, no. Uh, after the video I did a couple days ago about YouTube terrorism, people are like, so where are we going to find you on Odyssey? Where are we going to find you on Rumble? Where are we going to find you? I said I don't negotiate with terrorists. I've said many times I don't run from a fight. I know exactly what I'm up against here on YouTube and I will stand amidst the arrows. I'm not going anywhere. If they take my channel down, yes, I will show up somewhere else. But until then, I am not going to run scared to another platform, just like I am no longer going to be censoring myself when it comes to climate or the jab or other things like that, as I haven't been the last couple of days. So no, not doing that just yet. Does anything scare me? Yeah, this whole world is scary right now. Being aware of something scary doesn't mean it has to cause you fear and that has to take over everything about you because fear is nothing but a thief of your time, your energy, and your focus. Getting a little bit more specific, something that scares me is I am away from my children when all of this happens. There's a little part of me that never wants to be away from my children. Obviously, that's not realistic and that's not how I live my life. But yes, I'm afraid that something major is going to happen and I'm not going to be able to get back to my family. That is a real thing that happens inside my head. It doesn't cause me to live in fear. Big difference there. What do I do in my spare time? The heck is that? You have spare time? You paying attention to what's going on in the world around you? 
Okay, yeah, you know what? Let's just circle back to that last one. This is something that scares me. The way people are operating who know exactly what's going on, who literally, literally let this fear and this depression control their entire lives. Do you think I wake up happy-go-lucky every single day and I'm in a great mood with all the energy and motivation in the world? No. Three days ago, I can remember specifically, I woke up feeling absolutely awful. And you know what I did? The morning news, because that's what I do. You know what I did after that? Got my kids ready for their day, because that's what I do. You know what I did after that? I went to the gym, because that's what I do. You know what I did after that? Read a bunch of journals and made a video kind of like this, because that's what I do. Do you operate like that? If you don't, that scares me, because you're an observer, and you know better. Anyway, my spare time. I double up on my time. When I'm reading journals, I listen to Sadhguru. When I'm eating my meals, I listen to Ben Shapiro or Jordan Peterson. When I'm at the gym, it's not music in my headphones, it's Andrew Tate. And though I don't love the way he expresses his frustration or how much he swears or some of the slightly misogynistic things he says, he's also right about a whole heck of a lot of stuff. Same as Jordan, same as Ben Shapiro, same as Sadhguru. I don't care that he showed up at one World Economic Forum meeting. I was on InfoWars a couple days ago. Does that make me Alex Jones' puppet? The things I see people doing scare me spare time. Anyway, I'll see you in the morning for the daily show. Be safe, everyone.